Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. So good to see you all here this fine, fine September morning. Uh, just uh, so glad to have you here. Uh, so glad to be here. God is so good and so amazing. And uh, just, just thankful for another day, another opportunity to be uh, with our church family. Uh, very, very first thing I'd like to do is I think most of us realize that today is the anniversary of 9-11, uh, of the attacks on uh, in New York and Washington. And, you know, um, so many people have been thousands, tens of thousands of people affected by that event. I would just like to take a few moments of silence, just a moment of silence for all the people affected. And we've all been affected. Josh and I were talking uh, before you guys came up that we travel differently, we go to work differently, we go to school differently but since 9-11 and a lot of the things that have happened and affected our culture in the last 20 years has been pretty amazing, the changes that have come about because of things like 9-11. But uh, believe you me, if someone had a loved one or a friend that was killed in one of those attacks. Believe you me, they their memory of that day has not faded at all. So let's just take a few moments, a moment of silence uh, for 9/11, and then uh, then I'll also pray us in. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we do remember and we'll always remember all of those of us who are aware of the situation that happened 21 years ago. Father God and Lord Jesus, Lord, we just uh, lift up all the families that woke up this morning. They woke up on that, that morning like it was any other day. But when they went to bed, when they went to sleep that night, if they went to sleep that night, their lives were forever changed. And in a way, all of our lives are forever changed, Father God, because of that day. Lord Jesus, we just lift up uh, the folks then and the folks now. Lord Jesus, we just praise you and thank you that you've brought us through. You've made us stronger. You've made us wiser because of the events of that day, Lord Jesus. So, Father God, Lord, we just pray that continued protection over our people, our country, the fellowship of Christ, Lord Jesus, in this crazy, crazy time in history, Lord Jesus. But thank you for staying steadfast with us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for continuing to be faithful with us, Lord. We just praise you and thank you for all that. Lord Jesus, be with us today as we worship, as we gather together. We've been your hands and your feet all week. So, Father God, Lord Jesus, just give us peace and rest and reload our batteries. Recharge us, Father God, Lord Jesus. Lord, as we worship you, as we come to give you the gift of our praise, the gift of our worship, and all of our thanks and gratitude, Lord. We just praise you and thank you and love you. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. So a couple of announcements. Uh, just uh, for board members, uh, we are going to have a board meeting, uh, our bi-monthly board meeting on September 21st at Wednesday at 6.30. I'll be doing uh, Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff probably from right here that night on the 21st, and then we'll have a meeting following that. Uh, so board members can go be about the business of the, the church and uh, direction of the church and what's going on and what we're doing. So uh, board members keep that in mind. And then also a quick reminder that September 25th, which is a Sunday, we're going to have a church picnic right after our worship service. So 
uh, on that Sunday. And we're going to keep it simple. Uh, bring your favorite sandwiches, a side that goes with sandwiches. Um, I think I, th I thought maybe me, me and Rose will bring a nice topping bar. Uh, so if you'll just bring the sandwich stuff, we'll bring toppings and things lettuce like that, and lettuce and tomato and onion and pickles and stuff like that. And then uh, maybe you just want to grab a couple of bags of chips or something like that. So we'll have a nice time. Uh, hopefully, Lord willing, the weather will be nice and we'll get the picnic tables out and uh, just uh, everybody can play outside, eat outside, whoever wants to, and just have a good time on that day. So September 25th. Any other announcements? Miss Kathy? Um, our peanut butter and crackers for the fall break bag needs to be here by Sunday the 25th. Okay. Because that week that, that week they'll be packing for spring break. So, uh -huh. And right now it's 32. So 30 jars of peanut butter. I know we're already still down there. And 30 sleeve crackers. Also, we just need to remember to keep the regular items coming. Going. Yeah. Keep the, the pantry stocked up and the sign up sheets back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you've never been to Campbellsburg for the packing process, okay, you, you most of us have children. You know how much food it takes for one to four or five children. So imagine a backpack of food for 30 kids. It is. It takes a lot to keep that ministry going. So let's keep that in mind when we're out and buying a little uh, little something to, to take there. So let's just try uh, over the next few weeks up until the 25th uh, to make sure we have our crackers and peanut butter. But while you're out getting crackers and peanut butter, make sure you're grabbing uh, grab and go food that's quick, easy to eat. They can just open and eat on the weekends when they're home. That'd be great. So let's uh, let's just focus on that. Maybe this month of trying to get that get that uh, that pantry filled in Campbellsburg. Any other announcements this morning? All right. Let's stand. We're going to sing some great songs of our faith. We're going to start out with five eighteen in your hymnal. Let's stand.
number So keep Mary and Loudon in your in your prayers. Uh, continue to keep Miss Barbara in your prayers. I talked to her for a long time Friday night. She sounded really good. She sounded really strong to me, but she is really, really having some difficulties. Uh, they were able to take the catheter out Thursday, but she had a lot of discomfort and didn't feel good uh, at all on Friday and had a very, very hard day. 
she is going to have physical therapy because she is so weak from all that she's been through. She can, she just can't get around. So they're going to work with her, and then she has another urologist appointment in three weeks. Uh, they're going to check things and keep an eye on things, but just keep her and Ernie uh, in your prayers. Uh, just pray for strength. Uh, you know, you know how it is. It's exhausting going to the doctor and doctor's appointments and feeling bad. And you know, she's got. It's been one thing after another uh, for her. So just continue to keep them in your prayers and pray for strength uh, for Miss Barbara. Uh, also, Miss Midge isn't here. She's still still uh, having to take care of that foot. So just continue to keep Miss Midge in your prayers as well. She says she's re-injured. Well, I know she was having trouble with, you know, when you, you limp and favor stuff that makes other stuff hurt. So she's been dealing with that too, hip, knee, back pain from trying to favor uh, the one with the boot on it. So continue to keep Miss Midge in your prayers as well. Miss Brooke? Josh Alvey, his grandmother that raised him, is suffering with uh, progressive congestive heart failure, and she's not in very good shape, so if you could just keep her in your prayers. Okay. I don't know her name. So she's just Josh's uh, grandmother. Josh Alvey's grandmother. Okay. Josh Alvey's grandmother. Mr. Bob? Paul is having a lot of trouble breathing and has bronchitis. Struggling pretty hard with this is a tough time of year for her and, and people in general that have allergy problems, asthma, COPD, all the above. This is a really, you know, you have pollen, uh, but you also have uh, tree mold, leaf mold. There's a lot, there's a lot of allergy things going on. And I know people with allergy problems right now up until the first or second freeze or so in some colder weather. It's This is a tough time for folks, so keep them in your prayers as well. Anything else before we go to the Lord in prayer? I just want to say a praise that the Pound family is here with us uh, today. The, all, the, all the Pounds, the proud Pounds are in the house. So very, very thankful to have them. All, as always, so thankful to have our friend Josh here playing a little percussion for us and uh, livening up our, our songs. I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. So just so uh, so proud of him for answering God's call and going to school. And, you know, think about going to school full time while you're working full time. You're a husband and a father of four. And, woo-wee. And then you get to do this too. <laughs> so... So nothing like a 16-week in, uh, internship along with all the other stuff on your plate. So thank you, Josh. Thank you, Crystal, and bringing your and sharing your family with us today. Rosemary. And I just had a praise for everyone who pitched in with the flooding. Kathy has gone above and beyond changing out the dehumidifiers. And everyone who just stepped up and helped get the water out of the basement. Yep. Yep. Anything else? Anything else before we go to the Lord in prayer? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much. You're so good. You're such a good God. Father God, we need you. We need you in this world that's sometimes not so good. Those of us who remember 9-11, September 11th, Father God, how our hearts sunk that day. How we were afraid of what the rest of that day and the future would bring because it seemed so easy for them to do what they did, Father God. Lord Jesus, we just pray protection over our whole country, over our whole world, Lord Jesus. And Father God, just help us, Father God, not to live in fear. Now, I think in a lot of ways we've had to learn not to live in fear over the last 20 years with diseases and terrorism and so many what-ifs. 
But Father God, you've been with us all along. You've been so faithful. And you've been so strong, Father God. Lord Jesus, and thank you for building our faith through it. Lord Jesus, help us just to keep our eyes on you, Father God. Lord, just be with everybody. Uh, be with Josh Alvey's family, Father God, Lord Jesus, as they have suffered a, a loss. Continue to be with Mary and Loudon, Father God. Lord Jesus, we just pray over her. Lord Jesus, we just, uh, there's so many folks, Barbara and Ernie. Father God, be with Midge and George and their family, Father God. And Lord Jesus, we just pray for healing and comfort and help. Lord, be with Vicki and Tony, Father God. Continue to be with them as they continue to battle COVID and recover from that. And Lord Jesus, we miss people when they're not here. Lord Jesus, so Father God, just heal our folks. Heal Midge's foot and, and Father God, Barbara's uh, issues are back. And all, all that's gone on with her, Lord Jesus, just be with them and strengthen them and help them, Father God. Lord Jesus, we just praise you and thank you. And there are so many things. Continue to be with the window, Father God. Lord, we just praise you and we thank you. Lord, we all have stuff we need you to help us with. Everyone in this room, every one of us, have things that we have prayer requests for, Lord. But we also all have praises we could give. We're thankful for that, Lord. So, Lord Jesus, as we come to your table, as we give part of what you bless us with Lord Jesus just help us open our hearts and open our minds Lord thank you for everything you're so good we love you so much in your precious and holy name we pray Amen so our communion hymn is number 223 I need to talk to my editor my editor missed a missed a number so uh, the real communion hymn is number 
Heavenly Father, we come before you today, and as we take communion, uh, we just feel so blessed to be able to partake of your um, bread and your cup, and Lord, just let us remember each day the sacrifice that you gave to us. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to be gathered here today in your house. And, uh, please uh, uh, take these uh, tithes and offering, and we pray that they further your kingdom, and that, uh, that they're just a, a small token of our appreciation and our, our gratitude for, for all that you, you've blessed us with, God. And help us to, to remember the, the great gift of uh, salvation that, that Christ has uh, earned for us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to uh, we're going to start a new sermon series called the Word, and what we're going to focus on over the next several weeks. Sorry for you guys at home. I know you're. It's like you're on a roller coaster on in an earthquake, but that's okay. Now you're still. You're ready to go. So uh, we have such. An incredible resource that's afforded to us. We have the most important resource for life. For life, for everything in life. We have the most incredible resource, the most important, the most exclusive, the most exhaustive resource available to us in all of mankind, in all of history. The Word of God. The Holy Bible. 
So what we're going to talk about over the next few weeks is the Word of God. How powerful it is the things that come and are available to that. It's so much more than a book. It's so much more than a history lesson. It's so much more. You know, I've always, all, all my life, heard it referred to as a love letter from God to us. And how true is that? Virtually every question that you could ever have in life is answered in this. You see, God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. And he's left us this, but it's such a minute part of our lives. Why? Why? Do we, do we not immerse ourselves in something so incredible, so powerful, so important? I want us to start looking at the word of God in Psalm 33, beginning with verse 6. Psalm 33, beginning with verse 6. And I wanted to start out in the beginning, so to speak. So this is Psalm 33, beginning with verse 6. I want us to take a look at th this and I could have easily began with Genesis 1.1. I mean, that could have been an easy place to begin. But listen, Psalm 33, beginning with verse 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Okay, it's over. That's it. That's the sermon. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world reveal, revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. Psalm 33, 6 through 9. It tells it the way it is. Now, we're going to flip over to the New Testament all the way over to Hebrews. Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1, beginning with verse 1. Hebrews 1, verse 1. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times, and he spoke to them in various ways. But in these last days, listen to this, this is us, this is specifically for us. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining, listen to this, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to those. He's speaking to us through Jesus, through his son, to whom he made the entire universe. Jesus is the exact representation of God, and he sustains all things by his word. So what we have to remember when we're reading the word is it is built to last forever. Forever. Other words, other books have come and gone. The word, God's word, the word for us, and if you look it up, the Bible is the most published and the most purchased book in the history of mankind. That's amazing. 
And I think we Christians kind of think fond, fondly, and maybe even we're even proud of that statistic, right? The most published book in all of history, the most purchased book in all of history belongs to us, the Bible. But the truth is, the Bible is also one of, if not the most, misunderstood, misquoted, misused, underappreciated, underused, undervalued item of all time. Not just a book, but the most underappreciated, underused, and misunderstood book of all time. And during a time when I feel like it's the absolute most important time in history, I truly believe that this, for us believers, is the absolute most important time in history to know our Bible, to trust the Bible, and to know the Word of God. I truly believe that. For the followers of Jesus, to, we need to know the Bible the most. We sadly today know the Bible less than we ever have, at least in recent history. There's only one way to stop that trend, and that's up to us. The only way to stop that trend is for us to commit as believers and followers of Christ to learn, study, know, and even more importantly in some ways to live out the Word of God in front of all the people that we are around today. Everyone in our lives needs to see, hear, and know the word of God is alive in us. Over the next several weeks, we're going to dive deeply into the word of God. Today, we're going to begin by talking about, okay, so this word of God thing. Maybe you're asking yourself, well, what possible power could this book have? So we're going to talk today about some of the power that the Word of God actually have. We're going to take a look at that. And already in our readings today, just these two readings that we read just a moment ago in Psalms and Hebrews, we heard that His Word actually has the power to create something from nothing. We've already learned that so far today. That's lesson number one. We already know that God's word, he can speak things into existence that was never there before. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we say and we believe that God is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow, right? So do you think he's still creating? I think he does. I think God enjoys creating. And I think he still creates. So we know that God can create something out of nothing. His words also have the power to sustain what he creates for as long as he wishes it to exist. God's word creates something from nothing and it can exist as long as he wishes for it to. Some things forever and ever. He has the power to sustain what he creates for as long as he wishes it to exist. The world, for example, the universe, can go on as long as he wants. So in 2 Peter 3, 5, it says this. But they deliberately, listen, does this sound like today? But they deliberately forgot that long ago, by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. Don't forget that with the flood, the world was literally destroyed deluged by water and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of ungodly men. 
You see, even by his own word, by his word, he created this world. And by his very word, he can destroy it and make something incredibly new. We've already seen him do it once with the great flood. He took something and that he had already created and made it better. And believe you me, when he does it again, when he comes back the next time and destroys the old and makes the new, it's going to be far superior. It's going to be so much better because that's the way he works. And guess what? That's what he's done in each of our lives too. He's taken the old us and destroyed it and made something, recreated it into something new and incredible. Those of us who are resurrected in Christ, he has taken the old and made it new. We're more beautiful with Jesus than we were before. We're more special with Jesus than we were before. By his word, he has saved you and he saved me. By his word, he created this world and by his very word, he can destroy it and make something new. The word of God also has the power to heal. Yes, the word of God is so powerful that it can heal diseases. It can heal relationships. It can heal hearts. It can heal brokenness. And it can heal sinfulness. Psalm 107, 19 and 20 tells us, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. He's talking about us. He's talking about you and me. He can heal us and he can save us. Not only does his word heal us of our ailments and our hurts, which it does and can, his word rescues us from death itself. His word rescues us from death itself with a promise, a promise of eternal life, eternal life with him to boot. God's word heals. God's word heals. Heals. Reading it, learning it, and living it will heal you. The word additionally has the power to judge our hearts. Most of us know this next passage of scripture, okay? We, I think what most of us are familiar with this. It's Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. For the word of God is a living and active. The word of God is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Let's not forget that it starts out by saying, for the word of God does these things. The word of God. So you see, we think of this Bible, this book, a lot of times physically, but it's much more than that. You see, these pages and these words on these pages have a direct, direct signal with God. This thing is alive. It's so much more than paper and ink. So much more than leather and the binding. So much more than that. It's far more powerful than that. It's an incredible, powerful tool. It has the power to judge our hearts. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight, it says. 
Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him who we must give account. The word of God is part of God. If you're in the presence of the Bible, you are in the presence of God. That's how powerful it is. And God sees, he hears, and he knows. The word is powerful. The word of God is so powerful, it will notate everything we do. And the truth is, people don't want to hear it. But we will stand in judgment. We will. We will stand in judgment. Many of us listening to this can attest to this. The word of God can give us new birth and lead us to faith, right? Isn't that the truth? The word of God can give us new birth and lead us to our faith. James 1.18 says it this way. He chose us. He chose to give us birth through his word of truth. That we might be a kind of first fruit for all that he created. So when he calls us first fruit of his creation, listen to this. When God calls us the first fruit of his creation, what do you think he's saying when he says that? That you are the first fruit of my creation. What's he saying there? Well, I think God whispers in your ears, child, you're the best thing I ever made. You're the best thing I've ever created. That's what God's whispering in your ear when he says, we're the first fruit of his creation. Then in 1 Peter 1.23, he tells us this, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. You see, life is in this Bible. Life is in the word of God. Eternal life is in the pages of this incredible book. The very life, you want to know about eternal life, and what it's like, it's right here for us. Once again, we're born through the word of God and we have eternal life through the word of God. We are connected to our salvation and our eternity through this living word of God that he has given us to learn, to love, and to live out. That's how powerful this is. Yes, the word of God. His word and his will can save us can save us. And we all need saving. We all need saving. Listen to 2 Timothy 3.15. I love this. 2 Timothy 3.15. And how from infancy of our faith, you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. I think many of us would admit that our aha moment about needing salvation came while we were in God's word. A lot of times those aha moments haven't come during sermons or preaching or singing songs, although God works incredibly through those things a lot of times. But a lot of times our aha moment about our own salvation comes while we're in the word of God. And there's a reason for that. Because I don't know that anything on the planet is as connected to God as this Bible is. So therefore, when we connect with our Bibles, when we connect with the Word of God, we are connecting directly with God himself. That's the truth of the Word of God. The truth is, though, if God's word is being preached, then it's still the word of God. It's still that powerful. And sometimes we are prompted by God during a sermon, during preaching, during a devotional, because we're in the word of God and help us to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's true. But it's the seed of the word of God that leads to our aha moment and the need for salvation. Now that we've established this, 
We've established that our salvation ultimately is connected to the word of God. Let's explore the word of God's power to make us holy. So maybe you've been saved for a long time. Maybe you accept your salvation a long time ago. Maybe, maybe that happened years ago. Maybe even decades ago. Maybe almost a lifetime ago. You accepted your salvation. Then what? Where on the road have you gone since then? Well, the word of God promises us that once we're saved, we can continue on this journey. We can continue on this highway of faith. And he will continue to transform us like a metamorphosis. He can take something and make us even more beautiful. Like caterpillars. I love caterpillars. But man, I love butterflies, right? Well, that's what he's doing with us through the word of God. See, the word of God ultimately can make us holy. First and foremost, we just have to know and realize that we cannot make ourselves holy. You can't be good enough to be holy. You, you just can't. It's okay to be good. We should want to be good. We should do good. We should be good. But that does not make us holy. Only God and God's word can make us holy. Only God can do that. And in God's purpose and plan for your life, his word, the Bible, is a crucial ingredient in God helping to form us into a holy being. You see, you ever, you ever tried to make something and leave ingredients out? Have you ever done that? You ever tried to make a recipe that needed self-rising flour, but you used all purpose? Ooh, bad. Bad juju, right? Not good. Not good. So, just like in our walk of faith, if you try to become holy without God's word, you're just not going to make it. Bless you. You're just not going to make it. God's word, his Bible, is a crucial ingredient in God forming us into a holy being. The study and love of his word leads us down the path of holiness. And without God's word, holiness is unattainable. Listen to me. That's just the truth. Without God's word, Holiness is unattainable. We need the word of God to help us, to instruct us, to give us wisdom and knowledge in the Lord. One thing we should all know that in this life, we are in a battle. We're in a battle. We are in battles. Battles with a cunning enemy that tries to convince us that he doesn't even exist. What a battle plan. If even Christians don't believe that Satan is real, he's already won a lot of the battles. <clears throat> so we have an enemy that we battle against and his first mode of operation is to make you think he doesn't exist or he makes you forget about him. But the truth is, he's quite alive. And he's quite alert. That's according to the word of God. That's not Jeff's opinion. It's according to the word of God. So, if there's no such thing as Satan, then why, why did God go into such detail and time and trouble to create a one-of-a-kind suit of armor for each one of us to fight in. Why bother? Why bother making us a suit of armor if we're naive to, enough to think we're never going to go into battle? You see, he knows. He knows what he's doing. In Ephesians 6, we're given great detail about the armor of God and why it's so important for us to what? Put it on. Put it on every day. 
You see, and the scripture goes on to say our struggle is not just against flesh and bone. We are at war with powers of this dark world, dark spiritual forces. We can try to bury our heads in the sand about this kind of thing. We can. We can try to pretend like it doesn't happen, like it's not going on, that everything is great and everything is wonderful, but we all, we all have those things in our minds that are happening that we battle with we can smile we can fake our way through it we think but we all know we all know what tempts us all of us do we all do we we pretend around other people that it doesn't happen but we all know we all know the truth of what's going on inside of us, those battles that we face, those things that we want that we know we shouldn't. We know. We can try to bury our heads in the sand about this kind of thing, but it doesn't help it go away. So what do we do? What do we do? Well, we must dive into the word of God. We must put our armor on every day. Every day. And we have to be ready for battle. We have to be ready for battle because it'll come. Whether we like it or not. Those whispers of the devil will not stop. But that doesn't mean we just sit back and let it happen. God's given us the tools that we need the weapons we need to battle. And, you know, if you think and read about the armor of God, everything is defensive, right? Except one thing. One thing is that God gives us in our armor of God is an offensive weapon. What is it? The sword is the word of God. So here you go. You want a weapon to battle the things going on in your heart and mind? You got it. It's impenetrable. It's indestructible. It's eternal. And it's the most powerful thing in the universe because this is in direct line with God. So what do you do in these battles? Go to Him. Go to His Word. Listen, there's power in the word of God. There's power in the word of God. We've already found out. We know this. There's power to create. There's power to sustain. There's power to heal. Power to judge our hearts. Power to give us new birth. Power to give us faith. And power to save us. Within the word of God, there is a power to make us holy. There is power within God's word to help us fight Satan. And yes, there is even power for him to destroy the world if he so chooses. And he has. But the word of God is a power that we all need and we should all get in touch with. We all need the word of God. We need to be in the word of God. So next week, we're going to look at the characteristics of the word of God. Things like, uh, is it reliable? Is it true? Is it flawless? Is it alive? Is God's word eternal? And I think a question maybe all of us have asked at one time or another, will it endure? Will it endure? Let's pray. The word of God is that powerful, Lord Jesus. We need the word. And Father God, we need to be in touch with both of them, aware of them, and living with and through them, Father God. So Lord Jesus, we've seen how powerful your word is. Lord Jesus, help us you. Number 281. Oh, how I love Jesus.
I love this song. Hope you do too. together in your house. Father God, I pray that we will go out this week and, and not take the word for granted, Father. I pray that we will dive into the world, dive into the word, because it is powerful, it is healing, and it saves us. I pray that we'll uh, not take it for granted. We'll give it the time to be able to connect back with you, Father. And we just all this pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Have a great day. Love you guys, and I'll see you later.